I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 575. I'm not even going to pretend I know how to pronounce this guy's Flickr username. My guess is that it's pronounced Spyuge. It's spelled S-P-Y-U-G-E. He's an amateur photographer who took a 1200 DPI Epson GTS 620 scanner and used it to make a 130 megapixel camera. That many megapixels means he can take photos with a resolution of 13,000 by 10,000. His photo stream on Flickr is fun to look at because he's experimenting with different lenses and he doesn't just post the good images. Tiny URL.com slash S-P-Y-U-G-E will take you there if you want to have a look around. I don't know how well it'll show up on the video, but if you look at this image of a watch, you can see there are some imperfections that look like horizontal lines, but that doesn't take anything away from maximum coolness of the project. Lots of you have asked on Twitter and in the chat room if I'll be getting an iPhone 3GS. The answer is decidedly no, because it isn't subsidized for existing iPhone owners on AT&T like the 3G was. Early upgrade pricing makes the 16 gig version $400 and the 32 gig version $500. And if you don't qualify for that, the full price is $600 for the 16 and $700 for the 32. The feature updates aren't enough to justify the price for me, and I kind of like that. I get to enjoy the fun of an Apple announcement without feeling the highest level of gadget lust. It's interesting that Nokia fans don't seem to be nearly as price conscious about their mobiles. Nokia stores are starting to get N97s in today, and they'll sell for $700. If you're not that Nokia focused, the N97 is a multi media handset that has a touchscreen and a camera that shoots 16.9 video with a resolution of 642 by 358. Nokia calls it NHD. N97s also come preloaded with Quick, the live streaming application that allows you to stream live video in real time from a phone. Nokia is sending one for me to try out and it'll be the first post iPhone Nokia I've used. I'm looking forward to seeing how it compares. I have yet to meet an avid reader who tries a Kindle and doesn't love it, but I meet people all the time who think they won't love it because they've romanticized the paper book experience. They talk about the feel of the book in their hands and the tactile pleasure of flipping pages. Having fully drunk the Kindle Kool-Aid, I suppress the urge to roll my eyes when people tell me this, and the reason is that you gain 10 great things for every one you give up. I've said all that just to introduce you to smell of books in a can. With the press of the sprayer, you can aerosolize your room with a new book smell. Classic Musty would be the choice for people who love libraries. I don't have a clue what you'd get with the scent of sensibility, and I don't want to know what the ew you have cats can smells like. There is one scent, though. One scent that will explain why I'm really doing this story. They have a can of crunchy bacon scent. And how that has anything to do with the smell of books? Well, you just have to speculate. And that's what the comments on www.geekbrief.tv are for. By the way, I'm pretty sure this isn't a real product. EA's Tiger Woods PGA Tour 10 with Wii Motion Plus is now shipping, which means I need to get to Target. Thanks for watching. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye. I need darker hair, I think.